there is nothing wrong with your internet, do not attempt to adjust your settings. We are controlling the podcast. We control the squealing and the screams. We can make your heart flutter, your eyes blur from tears, or sharpen your mind to crystal clarity. For the next hour, sit back. We are in control of what you hear. We repeat, there is nothing wrong with your setting. You are about to experience the awe and mystery known as the female mind. You are now entering the Fangirl Zone. Welcome to Sci-Fi Chalk on the Fangirl Zone, a podcast where we discuss shows on the Sci-Fi Channel. I am Sean fangirl S. And I'm Steve, and today we'll be discussing Episode 7 of Season 1 of The Ark. Okay. Seriously, there's questions. Any questions? Yes. What is happening? Yeah. And why? Right. Because it makes no sense that Arc 15 would be taking out Arc 1 and 3. Right. Are we going to get any information? That's the big question. Right. Somebody wants trust dead. (laughs) Well, we do have some ratings for this episode. It brought in a 0.07 in adults 18 to 49 with 0.426 million viewers, making it the 78th rated cable show for the day. That's Numbers bad. keep creeping up. It's a slow move, but it's going the right way. Yep. Uh, I don't know. I feel like every time it cuts off, it's like, but wait. <laughs> but yes. Wait. <laughs> yeah. Every episode leaves you with more questions than answers. Mm-hmm. Most definitely. So, shall we jump into episode seven? Let's do it. A slow death is worse. The crew discover they are not alone in space and learn more about where they came from. Okay, I'm so questioning that because I'm like, how much is this girl lying? Right. We open with Lieutenant Garnett calling out to the crew aboard Arc 3 while Lieutenant Lane paces behind her. Nobody is responding to Garnett's hails. Lieutenant Bryce offers a closely Lieutenant Bryce offers to closely inspect the abandoned vessel much. However, Bryce and Ava return to Arc 1 to rejoin the group and try to figure out what's going on. Garnett allows Bryce and Lane to gather a crew to survey Arc 3 because, well, we have to see if there's any survivors. And second, let's figure out what happened, why they're here. How did they get ahead of us? That's a right, good yes. question. <laughs> Before he departs, Lane thanks Garnett for saving their lives again okay why are you thinking her again this way this is creeping me out right you've been a jerk for too long he apologizes for judging her based on her clone dna those crazy kids i'm getting a vibe for particular persuasion from them which might not be professional given that she's his superior but you know i digress meanwhile bryce prepares the shuttle for another trek to arc three ava trails him scolding him for volunteering for yet another dangerous mission yeah listen you're not his keeper ava if he wants to be crazy then let him be yes he'd rather go out swinging than waste away doing nothing cat tries to wander onto the bridge serendipious serendipitously (laughs) but garnett and alicia catch her in the act yeah well he's like yes good job carry on it's like if you said anything (laughs) you'd have probably been better off yeah she wants to ensure that her friend is not on arc three because she pulled some strings to get her on an arc. She just wasn't sure which one. Right. Garnett order. Jeez, I'm nice. I can't talk. Garnett orders her to watch from the viewing area for, you know, the plebes. Next, Angus asks Kat if Garnett is on the bridge. He wants to thank her for her sacrifice and give her this gift of ha 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 an aloe plant for her burns. Yes. Really? Oh my gosh. And obviously, Kat is able to pick up that Angus is carrying a torch for Garnett. Yes. No, no, I'm not. What are you What are you talking about? Okay, sure, Angus. She urges Angus to abandon his crush on Garnett in favor of someone, you know, more in your age group. Might that be? I love that he has no idea. Right. It doesn't dawn on him. He is really one of those smart guys that can't see past his glasses sometimes. Yep, yep. On Arc 3, Ava turns on life support while the gang stands around, aghast that the array of corpses littering the ground all around their feet. It it was a little um 
distressing, I guess yes. is a good word for that. I'm like trying to yes, find very the right distressing. word. Off-putting. There, that's another one. Lane notes how they appear to have suffocated. And yeah, as Ava's messing with the life support, it's like, yeah, it looks good. But Garnett overhears their conversation while on Arc 1 and orders the crew to disperse and perform their respective duties. So Lane heads onto the bridge and attempts to enter his codes to access the ship logs. Unfortunately, he's barred from doing so. Bryce and Ava try to track down the Sleeper Bay cryopods, only to discover there are no cryopods aboard this ship. Indeed, there's a massive crew quarters with bunk beds. That would have probably been helpful on Arc 1, too. Yes. Just throwing that out there. Sasha wanders into the captain's quarters and finds a bottle of alcohol. Naturally, he takes a good swig, or two, or several. And, hello, you see all these people dead, you don't know it from what? Why would you be drinking anything until you right. know? I thought he was going to keel over right there. Yeah. Suddenly, the dead captain falls out of a closet and lands on Sasha. Then an alarm blares, revealing on a screen a hazard in that space. Sasha calls out to Bryce and Ava and tells them the atmosphere is venting. Ava and Bryce spring into action to free Sasha. Ava learned how to pick locks after Harris's death. Thankfully, she rescues Sasha before he loses too much oxygen. Bryce performs CPR on the unconscious Sasha, and it's enough to revive him. Success. Thank God. <laughs> yes, we don't need people dying yeah, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Felix scans the bodies of the Arc 3 crew. He sends these scans to Garnett and Alicia on Arc 1, where they identify the passengers. According to Garnett, none of said passengers are supposed to be on Arc 3. They're not on the original crew manifest. Unfortunately, Felix discovers the body of his husband, Robert. That no. was heartbreaking. Uh, it took a second. As soon as, because I didn't recognize the guy's face right off. Right. So as soon as I realized what it was, it's like, no, what's going on? Yeah. After a moment of shock, Felix's mind lands on their daughter, Catherine. Where is she? He asks those aboard the ship with him to keep their eyes peeled for a young girl. Lane finds a lone passenger attempting to pick a lock, and he chases them down. Oh, I thought he was trying, or that um, person was trying to lock him in and cause something. Right. He removes their helmet. Kelly Fowler cries out in pain as Lane twists her broken arm. She says there are hostile crew members on board. She was essentially at war with them. Bryce and Eva reveal Kel Kelly's enemies overdose collectively in the med bay. Kelly recalls her friend Ross is alone in the mess hall, so she and Lane make a beeline for him. Once they reach the mess hall, Felix asks Kelly if she knew his husband. She doesn't answer readily. Lane finds Ross on the floor, and he does, doesn't look so hot. They transport Ross to Dr. Kabir on Arc 1. She cuts off his shirt to reveal his immensely bruised torso. Kabir reveals Ross has internal bleeding, so she prepares him for immediate surgery. Unfortunately, Ross dies on the surgical table. You can tell, even in the silence, that Kabir blames herself. With the whole thing with Kelly not answering Felix right away, I'm like, is that his daughter? Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking it's weird things. <laughs> you know, I didn't know what was happening. But past my, who is that? We have Felix setting Kelly's arm and orders her not to move it. She reveals she lied earlier. Well, exactly lie. She didn't say anything. But she did know Robert. They occasionally had lunch together. Okay, are you going to be one of these weird people that just lie about everything? I don't right. According to Kelly, Arc 3 prioritized spouses of Arc 1 passengers, hence why Robert was on the ship. Yeah, it was supposed to be family and spouses. It's like, wait a second, this is right. right. Yeah. She claimed he was excited to reunite with Felix. However, there were no kids on Arc 3. After learning this development, Felix storms into the hallway and drops to his knees. And Yeah, that was a little heartbreaking. Yes. Probably more than a little, but Kabir holds him close while he sobs. Aw. That's what he did for her in the previous episode. So it was a sweet little, you know, full circle there. Right. Although not great either way. Yes. 
Later, Garnett brings Kelly into a council meeting. Everyone proceeds to ask her questions simultaneously, shouting over each other. Hello, people. Let's stop and breathe. But yeah. here's a new drinking game for you. Take a shot anytime there's a scene featuring folks shouting over each other. Uh, <laughs> you might be drunk super fast. Just yes. Saying. Kelly discloses that she's an engineering intern, so she doesn't know much. She set a booby trap for Sasha, thinking he was one of the hostile passengers with whom she was warring with. And again, if you were worried about the atmosphere, why were you wearing what looked like a rain, like, poncho? I think you would be wearing, like, your suit or something, but right, whatever works. Kelly reveals Evelyn Maddox, the trillionaire who bought William Trust's company, figured out how to implement faster than light speed. Why does this sound very familiar? Yeah. Arc 3 was redirected to Proxima B, the same planetary destination as our Arc 1, because it's more apt to sustain life. Lane asks about Arc 2. Kelly divulges that the ship attempted FTL and uh, failed. So everyone on Arc 2 perished. I feel like they would have tried that testing it without a bunch of people on board. Yes. But maybe somebody wasn't so bright. I don't know. Garnett wants her team to return to Arc 3 for more supplies because, hey, they got the stuff and nobody needs it. I guess yep. they're going to pirate this stuff. She also urges Kelly to explore her new home. Then Garnett limps into the viewing bay area to chat with Kat. She brings Kat an updated Arc 3 manifest for the latter's pursual. Kat breathes a sigh of relief when she notices that her friend's name is not on the list. Well, I don't know if you should breathe the sigh of relief too no, much, especially more after what we she see. She was on Arc Two, and oh yeah, let's not her that dead. right now. Oh gosh, that's really depressing. Yeah, I guess it's better than Arc Fifteen because we don't know what's happening there. Yeah. But anyway, they hear a commotion near the entrance as the crew swarms Kelly, pestering her with incessant questions. Burnett scolds the crew for overwhelming Kelly. However, Kelly agrees to tell them what happened. I'm sorry, but the one guy's like, well, what about this? What about Garnett's like, chill, man, we're getting to it. Yeah. We have a right to know. No, we need to find out what this poor woman has gone through and start from there. How about everybody take a breath? Someone then decides to have a shipwide broadcast of everything that Kelly's told them. Yeah, that's great, except we also don't know how much is 100% true. Right. She reveals that the Earth succumbed to intense climate change, including the fires and tidal wave, which happened much faster than they originally thought. Everything either burned or submerged. While the ARC program moved forward as planned, with 12 ARCs set to depart Earth, she's unsure if all of them escaped. They might be the last survivors of Earth. And she does tell them, I think in the, the council meeting, that right. there was 15 ARCs, right? Yeah. That she knew of. She just didn't know how many took off. Yep. Glasner delivers a beautifully raw performance here. After her monologue, Kat takes Kelly aside and cleans her up. Garnett calls Kelly to the bridge to reveal they have a plan to leave for a supply run to Arc 3. Alicia and Angus will retrieve the video for footage to study it and learn what hit the Arc. I thought this was interesting because she's like, oh, we tried. There's nothing, it, there's nothing there. It's like, right. you were really quick and we know... That there was no footage, but why are you like, no, 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 don't look. Were you a plant? Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm wor worried here. But everyone else will grab food supplies, medicine, etc. And then Kelly volunteers to accompany Felix to snag some weapons for the ship because they might not be in the same place that you originally think they are. It's like, why? Yeah. What did you do? Yeah. So Jelena finds a samurai sword while collecting passengers' items. It belongs to Felix. So she returns it to him. It appears that Robert was storing it for his hubby. Felix is taken aback. He tells Kelly he used that sword to train. That was strange. Why are you using a sword? Yeah. Meanwhile, Kabir receives all the medical supplies from Mark III. She's still experiencing withdrawal symptoms from her substance addiction. Naturally, bottles chock full of pills become temptations. Don't do it. Do you think she's going to, or do you think yes. she's going to? See, I was thinking she was going to, like, be angry because she still feels guilt about not being able to save the other guy. Right. So that she's going to be, like, pissed and throwing stuff around instead. Yeah, could be. While filling their storage container with guns, Kelly confesses the truth. Robert did talk about Catherine. The little girl took a stray bullet amid a protest on Earth. 
She died before Robert boarded Ark 3. Man, that's tough. I don't know if I believe her, though. Right. Yep. Saying I'm that starting to think that there's Robert like, isn't alive to corroborate the story. It's hard to know, but right. And if all of these ships were built the same way, why didn't Lane go? You know what? There might be a secret compartment just like this one. I'm wondering if that's where the kids are. Right. Could like be in cryopods. You know, because the kids can't exactly do a whole lot on a ship. Yeah. Felix tries to suppress his pain, claiming he should now know. He should know now. Felix decides to send the weapons through the airlock. What? He yeah, he asserts that they don't need guns on a spaceship. Kelly agrees with him, but when she walks away, we see a handgun stashed in the waist of her pants. Something's fishy here. Yeah, this is why I don't trust this crazy Yeah. Next, Alicia and Angus attempt to salvage the video footage from Mark Three. Alicia implements an algorithm to save the good parts of the video. Angus and Alicia discover that Arc 15 shot Arc 3. So this um, is interesting because that means Arc 15 has this weapon with the stuff that Angus and Alicia couldn't figure out how to create into a weapon. Right. So it's like, what is this stuff? Obviously yep. somewhere on the planet. Yep. So it makes me scratch my head. Yep. That also means Arc 15 attacked their ship, too. But why? Because they've got a faster-than-light engine and have already populated, started populating Proxima B, apparently, and they didn't want Well, you think that's what it is? I kind of do, yeah. I'm thinking that it went around, that whoever's on 15 went around and, like, was destroying all of the ships that yeah, left could be. before. could be. Yeah. Just because it's like the people who are half crazed at this. That's all that's left. It's like, oh, yeah, you're the good ones to populate somewhere. Right. Ava and Bryce wander into their engine room on Arc 3 and discover Maddox Corporation's FTL device. He urges Eva not to touch it, but she insists that as an engineer, she knows what she's doing. I do love that. She's like, no, those signs are for stupid people like you. Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly, an alarm blares and a countdown to self-destruction begins. Rut row. Garnett calls Kelly onto the bridge and asks if this is another of her booby traps. She insists it's not. Maddox's device is the most important thing in the universe, so naturally it's protected. They need a code to counteract the self-destruct. Bryce and Eva share a tender moment. They grab hands and decide to spend their final moments being lovey-dovey. As they're about to kiss, Lane reveals he's got the code. Ava enters it quickly, and it switches off the self-destruct. And Garnett wonders aloud where Lane is. Well, we see he's in the secret room with William Trust, who he woke up. Trust wonders where he is and why. That was interesting. Yeah, big time. It's like, WTF? Right. You the have no that, idea that you were put in cryo sleep and exactly. That's exactly what I was gonna say. It's like, wait a second. So that really has me scratching my head. Or maybe, and here's another thought, whoever's on fifteen is trying to take out trust. Right. So they're gonna take out all of them. Yeah. So it's just like, what is going on? Now I'm wondering, because obviously I don't know, if they can if they can't transfer the FTL, if they can tether to the other ship so they can, you know, both be like, pulled along. Yeah. Yeah. Or like, which ship is better? But, you know, obviously there's a lot of damage because of Arc 15. Shooting at what, them. Yes. Can they pull all the bunks out then so that there's at least some place for everyone to sleep? You know, what can they do? Right. Or is it only they can only salvage? And then the other question I have for you, because this had me like scratching my head they had no access to the ship's computers right like they were locked out but suddenly there was something because garnett mentions that there was something in the captain's log or whatever so do they now have access to it are they going to have to try to break into it is angus and alicia going to be able to write a program to get them in right you know, what's going on i want to yeah. know everything and kelly might have to go out that airlock i'm just saying yeah <laughs> Especially after Felix says, you know, a stray bullet can puncture the 
the hall and we're right. all dead. Yeah. Like, is that what you want? Maybe she was a plant. Maybe this is a whole lot. There's a lot of maybes going through my head with this, basically. Yes, absolutely. Like I said earlier, more questions than answers. Yes. And, and this one, we didn't have a clean ending. No. Because obviously the whole thing with Kelly, the whole thing with Trust waking up, not knowing why he's there. Right. There's just a lot of stuff going, okay, we're going into the next episode. How many episodes of this do we have? Ten. We have three more left. That's it. We are, oh, they are not going to wrap this. And they haven't said anything about another season. Not yet. Nope. Huge cliffhanger. Yep. More than likely. Damn it. Yep. Well, we'd love to hear your thoughts on each and every episode this season. Our deadline for feedback is 6 p.m. Eastern every Friday during the season. You can send your feedback via email or audio to contact us at fangirlzone.com. Please review and rate us on iTunes and any other platform you use for your podcast with good ratings and reviews. It helps other fans of the show find us as there are some art podcasts out there. Tell your friends and we hope you're enjoying our podcast and don't forget to check out the other great Fangirl Zone podcasts. You can check everything out over at www.fangirlzone.com where you can find our contacts page with all the ways to get a hold of us. You can find our podcast page with all of our podcasts over there because we have quite a few and you might like several of them. And we want to know what your questions are. What's your biggest head scratcher so far this season? I know I just got so many questions rolling around my noggin about this show. So for this episode of Sci-Fi Talk. I'm Steve. You know, all of a sudden, I'm not ready to go. And I'm Sean Fangirl S. And until next time.